chapter 12, lesson 2, is comparing fractions. So in grade 2, the kids started comparing fractions already. Okay, but this time around, the comparison are a bit harder. Okay, in grade 2, they were only comparing two things or three things, but they're all either the same numerator or the same denominator. So pretty simple. But now, it's a little bit more challenging. So I hope that with my explanation, it'll bring a little bit of clarity and a strategy that you can teach to your kids. Okay, so we must remember from grade two, if the numerators are all the same, the larger the denominator is, the smaller the fraction is. Okay, also, if they all have the same denominator, the larger the numerator is, the larger the fraction is. Okay, so in grade two, all of the comparison were either, like I said, same numerator or same denominator. Okay, but now what has to happen is their numerators or their denominators are now different. Okay, so the way to do comparison of different fractions is really by finding equivalent fractions. However, the strategy of the book is uh, quite stressful. So hopefully with uh, my strategy, it'll make it a little bit easier for you to teach your kids and for your kids to understand the process more. Okay, so the, uh, the thing that we also have to remember if we're comparing two, there's the strategy which I will demonstrate shortly. But when they're comparing three or more fractions, the ideal thing to do is visualize a number line. And visualize that in the middle of the number line is one half. Okay, so here's the number line. Here's one half. And visualize the numbers or the fractions that are smaller than a half will go on the left side. And the fractions that are bigger than a half will go on the right side. So how do we know if a fraction is smaller than or bigger than a half? If you divide the denominator and the numerator is smaller than a half, then that means it goes on the left. So again, I'll say that again. If you divide the denominator and by two, okay, and you the quotient you get is smaller than the numerator is smaller than a half, the divided by two, then that means it goes on the left. Okay, but if it's bigger than when you divide by two, then it goes on the right. Okay, so again, that strategy you will see shortly as I explain the problems from the book. Okay, so we will start with page 69. Okay, so here it says uh, problem number four. It says, which is smaller? So again, which... Okay, so this problem has a picture, which means it's easy for the kids to just look at the picture. But again, not always will there be a picture that will depict which one is bigger and which one is smaller. So the strategy is, we write it like this. We write the two fractions. Okay, and what we do is we multiply across. So nine times three is 27. And 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, which means when I multiply, and that's 27, and that's 20, this is the greater fraction, and this is the smaller fraction. So if it says which is smaller, 4 ninth is the smaller fraction. Okay, then um, parents will al always ask, well, isn't, is the, are the kids going to be greeted the same way if they do it this way. Now, in theory, what they're doing is they're looking for the equivalent fractions of these. So if you look at, that's 3 over 5 is technically equivalent to 27 over 5 times 9, which is 45. And 4 over 9 is technically equivalent to 20 over 5 times 9, which is 45. So which means this is the smaller. It's just we don't show all of the work. So 
If the kids need to show the work, then they need to show. If they don't need to show the work, this is the way to do. So you cross multiply, and then you identify which one is greater and which one is smaller so that the kids won't be stressed. Okay, now the next problem that we will do is on page 70 and is number 7. Okay, so it says, which is smaller? Okay, so which is smaller? Okay, so again, the method of the book is quite stressful. So rather than uh, explaining it to you guys, I'll just explain my strategy. Okay, in the end, it's the same final answers to their, uh, the way that they're teaching. Okay, so again, we're going to write down 7, 8, and 5, 6. Okay, so which means if I multiply, that will be... 42 and I multiply that will be 40 and again this is the greater this is the smaller so here it says which is smaller so that means 5 6 is the smaller one so 5 6 is smaller okay so again um it, the way that I'm showing here just cuts the steps down a bit. So if you look at the way the book did the problem, they will end up with the same 42 over 48 and 40 over 48, but reduced down to 24, which is, again, too stressful for the kids. So better to just do it this method. Okay, and finally, the last problem that I will do is on page 74. Now, on page 74, it says, arrange in order. Okay, this time around, there's three of them. Okay, so once there's three of them, it's a little bit more stressful because you can't do this strategy right away. So the strategy is we look at the line, the number line, and we put half. If the half is among the fractions we are arranging, we'll put it on the bottom of the line. But if half is not among the numbers that we're arranging, we'll put it on the top. So it's just a marker. Okay, so let's begin with letter A. Arrange starting with the greatest. Okay, and the numbers are, the fractions are two thirds, one fifth, and three tenth. Okay, so if I look at the number line, Okay, one half is not among the three fractions. So I'm going to put it on top, one half. Okay, then I'm going to decide if each of these will go on the left or on the right side. Okay, so I'll start with the two-thirds. If I divide three by two, I get 1.5. Two is bigger than 1.5, so that's going to go on the right side. Okay, so I'll put it on the top first, and then my final answer will go on the bottom. So this is two-thirds. Okay, then if I divide 5 by 2, that's 2.5. 1 is smaller than 2.5. So that's going to go on the left, one-fifth. Okay, and finally, divide 10 by 2, that would be 5. 3 is smaller than 5. So that's going to go on the left. Okay, so which means for sure the two-thirds is on the bottom. Okay. Now, we got to arrange these two. So the strategy that we had earlier on, that's what we're going to use here. So if we cross multiply, that's 10 and that's 15. And this is already arranged in order. So that means this is 1 fifth and 3 tenth. So if it says arrange from the greatest, the greatest happens to be 2 thirds. Then 3 tenth. Then one fifth. Okay, another problem will be letter B of number 12. Okay, so it says this time around from the smallest. Okay, and our fractions are 4 over 7, 4 over 5, and 1 over 2. Okay, this is a bit easier. There's the one half 
is among the fractions being arranged. So I'm going to put it on the bottom, one half. Okay, so then I look at uh, 4 over 7, take half of 7, that's 3 and a half. So 4 is bigger, that's going to go on the right side, 4 over 7. So I'll put it on the top first because I don't know what the final order will be. Okay, then 4 over 5, half of 5 is 2 and a half. 4 is bigger, so that's going to go on the right side. Okay, now, if we notice, both of these have numerators of 4. Since the numerator is 4, then that means we'll just compare the denominator. The bigger the denominator is, the smaller the fraction is. So that means 4 seventh is smaller than 4 fifth. So that's also in the order that we want, 4 seventh and 4 fifth. So our final answer, since it says from the smallest to the largest, so that means 1 half, 4 seventh, and 4 fifth. So again, parents, this is a very stressful lesson. Okay, they need to practice. You need to practice also if you're not getting the strategy. That concludes lesson two of chapter 12. See you in the next lesson.